Comrades, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. This is the third episode of our mini-series looking at the Apollo missions. Today we are building the lunar lander, the LEM, or in our case, the MEM. So first of all, you know the drill. Let's have a look at some of the images and just uh, make sure we know what we're doing here. So comrades, at last we get to the lunar lander. Now let's have a quick look around here, just again to get our bearings. Uh, this is actually a good image here. We can see the scale of the rover in comparison with the lander itself. Now this is why I keep saying that the lander that we have is actually undersized when we compare it to the real thing. Now, okay, that's fine. It doesn't uh, have to be strictly the same, of course. It's the Kerbal equivalent after all. But I think that really does mean we can't take the rover with the lander when we go land on the moon. Because even the wheels are about the whole width of that tank there. So anyway, that's a whole other discussion. One of the things I saw is this image here on astronautics. Uh, this actually also shows this point that the at least the, the top part of the lander is definitely smaller in our game than it was in the real world. Because we see here the lander itself is about the width of the Apollo capsule there, the command module. If we look at the lower tank of the lander, it's actually wider than the service module, uh, the diameter there. So that's definitely something to keep in mind there. Now, uh, yes, the parrot is definitely uh, whistling in the background again, but uh, that's what he likes to do. So let's see, this is a good image, I like this one. Now this also shows us that the uh, the lander here doesn't have that sloped adapter in the middle here, which we sort of get automatically now when we attach the bottom part to the top part, as I will show you in a moment. You probably have seen that already. So it really has a flat top there. Now, there are other images, of course, showing the same thing, really. It's the top part is basically mated onto the bottom there without any slope. This, of course, shows it very well. It's a flat section there, but this is now just a model. And I saw here, good grief, Neil Armstrong's solid gold moon lander replica stolen. Can you imagine that? Good grief. That thing must be priceless, but anyway... So, yes, that, uh, of course, won't show all the details, but we can clearly see the lander is attached there to the tank. Now, another important note here is that, of course, we have eight sides to the uh, tank on the bottom, and the legs are uh, in line with the hatch again, which I always use for the reference. So we know there's a flat panel directly under the hatch, and then a landing leg with a ladder. Now, comrades, this is the part that's given me the greatest headache of all. I still don't know what what the solution is to that, because there is no satisfactory way to make a ladder there, because of the way that our la landing legs work. I'll show you all of that, so we're going to have to make compromises, comrades. It's unavoidable. Again, the practicality of it demands it, unfortunately. Now, this we can also see, well, this is now, of course, not uh, not an image. Let's just find another one. This is now a 3D model again. Uh, I want to have a look at the images again. Now, we see definitely some of these uh, side panels are not gold. They're black. Now, of course, I imagine there were instruments here, and, of course, there uh, still has to be a rover attached somewhere. But uh, let me just see, where was this other? It is this one, I think. Was it on the top of the Wikipedia page? No, it was this one. I just have to wait a moment to load. Now, this apparently is Apollo 16. Now, so I, I'm not sure if the rover attached here or on the other side, but obviously the gold foil has been removed here, but now we see there is a black panel there with a flag. Now, I'm not sure if I can put the flag there. I'll try, but... Uh, so we can make some variation here. We don't have to make the whole bottom part gold. That will help it to sort of break up the monotony almost of it. 
Now, when we look at the actual uh, lander uh, capsule itself here, we notice there are these sort of guards almost for the RCS jets, for the ones firing down, so that the uh, the actual jets there don't hit the bottom tank there and obviously thereby lose efficiency. So this sort of directs the flow away from the bottom tank. Now that I can recreate with triangular panels, so it's obviously not going to be as narrow and well shaped as this, but I actually like the, the solution I have there. Now let's see if we can just see something about the antennas. Now there's a radar on the top there and an S-band antenna on the left side there. I also saw another one. This one shows like a, a normal antenna at the back. Again, there's the ladder. So I'm not sure again with this. I'll try to recreate that, but uh, Obviously, there has to be some room for uh, a license, I suppose. There on the front is where this radar would be, and then on the side is where the S-band will be. So let's have a look at this thing, comrades. At least they built the top part for us already, so that will save some time today. So comrades, the Admiral Design Bureau is back in action, and we have to start with the... Mooner Excursion Module, of course, so that is uh, at least a lot of the work done already. And I was thinking about this whole flag business yesterday. Actually, this makes more sense given uh, what someone said about OCD and the alphabetic uh, order, the CDO. A, B, D, that is alphabetic, but then of course we reverse it to do the uh, Admiral Design Bureau. So it has a sort of double double way that it goes there. Why not? You know, adds another element to it. So anyway, we have this tank on the bottom of the mem here. That is now, I guess, not uh, matching the real thing, but uh, that's okay. Of course, we work with this because this is better than anything I could have done in the old stock KSP. So let's have a look again. This is just now a demonstration. If we take the command module, we can see how much wider the command module is than the MEM. So we know that the scale is slightly uh, undersized there. But, mm, oh well. It's just that it causes a problem with the ladder. Now, of course, here we don't have to do much. We just need a docking port. Uh, the junior, of course, on the top, and a spark engine on the bottom. So, of course, to the top node there, just like that. So, we could even rotate that so that the pipe points maybe to the back. Not sure why, but hmm, there we go. So, that's it. That's the top part. Of course, we need the various antennas uh, as well. So, let's have a look. Of course, the high gains will have to do. I'm not too sure what to do now. This is not going to be a deployable one. Let's just make sure it is extended. You see, it's way too far away. So, I'm going to have to move this into the thing now, which means it will not move later. Just a bit in as well, and we'll be able to dock just fine. So that will have to do. Now, of course, we need one on the side as well. Let's just do the same thing again, extend it first. Now, where was this? I think it was a bit higher. just going to go back to the images again, as I usually do. Uh, let's see, where can I see that back antenna thing? So the line goes to the top there. Hmm. I need to see it from the side. The other side. You know, it's uh, the golden rule, of course, when you're looking for something, you'll never find it. But if you're not looking for it, it's all over the place. Okay, there's another sort of mock-up. Well, I guess in that sense, we don't have to be too precise. Looks like they didn't want to take pictures of the lander from the angle that I want. Hmm, oh well. 
not cooperating. But at least I now see that this line has to match the top there. Just like that. So if we move this in now, we could even rotate this to give it a bit of a an appearance as if it's now pointing towards Kerbin. Like that. Uh, oh, we have this thing sticking out the top now. I don't want that. So I suppose this will dictate how high we can move this. No, it will have to go down. Hmm. There. Okay, that's fine still. I'm happy with that. We could even move it a bit out again. But like that. So uh, it does give this sort of nice appearance that this thing actually would work. Now, of course, there's one more communitron and it sits just behind the uh, docking port on the top edge here. I would move it out a little bit. So let's see uh, if that will look okay. Now it's moving into the docking port now. Hmm, what if we just rotate it very slightly? Ah, I can't get closer now. Maybe right in the middle there. I wish I could zoom in more. Now we're seeing it from the top, which is not what I want. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Why make it difficult? Okay, there. I just don't want the red and white clipping into the edge there, and it has to be free to extend. Okay, so I think if we just have a look at it in action, that pretty much looks nice. So obviously we will uh, bring that antenna back in before we dock, because otherwise it will clip. But now that thing is also going to clip. It's a good thing we're testing all of this, but no, 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 it's not going to clip. Let's just bring the docking port there, and then of course we still have the service module. And then that, of course, we moved it a little further. So we, we can actually dock without bringing the antennas back in, which I like. So problem sorted. Let's just put it back in again. Am I happy with that? It's not exactly at a 45 degree angle, but if I look at the picture again, that is more upright than it is off on an angle. And of course, I don't want to move the docking ports for little protrusions there, unless I do that. How would that look? Maybe it could be like another uh, Admiral Design Bureau touch. Let's move this back a bit now. Yes, that's much better. Ha! Small details, comrades. They make life worth it. So, we see we have 930 meters of Delta V on the top stage here. So, we should have at least the same on the landing stage. Now, of course, we get into a real pickle. So, first of all, we have to have the decoupler, which must attach to the engine, not to this point that gives us this skirting here which the real thing did not have. Now again, if you don't care about things like this, well then I imagine you wouldn't be watching this, but uh, then you can go with that. That's certainly not bad, and again it's the Kerbal interpretation, but for our purpose we want this. So uh, next we have to decide on the tank. Now if I just bring the service module from up the uh, S, uh, CSM back, we can see how much wider that is again. Now, if I bring the tank that I think they want us to use, which is the FLTX220, now, of course, attaching it to the right point is uh, a struggle on its own. But the reason why I say I think they want us to use this is because of that skirting. It fits perfectly over this, so we can see this is the right diameter. But now, if we have a look again, oh, good grief, same problem. 
that is much narrower than the service module so obviously we saw that it should be at least as wide as that but okay that just goes back to the argument that it's a bit undersized but so be it now this I'm going to bury beneath panels. Now we see here the tank actually is sort of indented there on both sides. So I could fit some mono propellant tanks in there without then having to empty the fuel. Just to not break realism too much. Let's try this. The small ones maybe. Because the thing is, we don't want to use the monopropellant of the capsule on the way down. It only has 30, which is not a lot, and we still have to dock with the thing. So I just want to have some on the landing stage as well. Now let's just move this back in now. There's still supposed to be a gap there. Now some clipping here is now un un unfortunately unavoidable. It is moving into the tank now, but I could counter-argue that we still have the empty spaces on the top here, so obviously in real life we would split it and fill up this empty sort of rest of the structure there. So it doesn't really matter which way we slice it. So let's just move it a bit further back in. So there we go, it's still sort of... part of the tank is still free here, and then we imagine the rest would be on the top there. So now we need an engine for the lower stage and for that I think the best one to use is the Terrier. And the reason I say that is because the engine itself is much bigger than the top one. So if we just attach that there, of course not like this, we will move it into the tank, again pretending that this housing would be removed, we would not have that. Maybe with that, uh, with a pipe sticking out like that. I still want to close this with panels anyway. But that works for me, the size of this nozzle there. It's much better than using a spark or something bigger even. So that gives us 992 meters per second of delta V. Now this is still going to drop because we add the panels and the legs and all of that. So uh, it is more or less in line, but I fear we might end with uh, a little less than the ascent stage, which is going to make the landing quite challenging, I have to say. But uh, we can manage, I'm sure. Let's get the panels. Now the structural panels, the smallest one, the SP, is that a S06? These are the ones that we want to use. And we know that there's eight of them on this uh, tank. So we will have four by four. We just rotate so the stripes, oh, the stripes don't matter because of the gold. Just four, as high as I can take it. Now, of course, gold. That is perfectly made for this. So, uh, we just move this up now. So that the tank is about halfway. So it sticks out a little on the top and a little on the bottom. There we go. Now, of course, we need four more panels. But this I'm going to do in 2x2 two two symmetry. Because I want two of them to be the grey color, not the... Uh, gold. So this one and the other side. So these two will be gold still. Again, this really doesn't matter, but it gives it somewhat of a nicer finish. So let's move this up in the same way now. Like that. Of course, we still have these ghastly gaps in between, but I have a solution for that. So firstly, we just have to get the other two panels in place. Now, because these do have stripes, I think I want the stripes to go down. But it will be easier to just rotate it with the actual rotation tool with the snapping on. Like that. So then we just move this back. Oh, good grief. No, undo, undo. Snapping is a problem there. So how do we solve this? Uh... That's not good. No, because it moves it away there. I 
I suppose we'll just have to do it manually as long as the angles are correct there. So let us move this back now. Of course, I want the local offset and like that. Yes, that'll work, comrade. So now we have the uh, basic outline. Of course, I want this the darker color. Now, see, where are we going to fit a rover on this thing? It doesn't make any sense. Look at the size of the wheels. That's about the size of the whole rover in the image that we saw. So, uh, oh well, it's still very useful, of course, but we will send it independently to the moon. So now we want to fill up these gaps. Now, the problem is, comrades, this is having a measurable effect on our delta V. We're down to 951 already. So adding more panels is unfortunately going to bring it down even further. So uh, I'm not sure we might want to throw on some more fuel tanks here and hide them somewhere. Then we can argue we're filling up the rest of the empty space there if we want to logically justify it. So now let's just sort of hover this over the middle, the empty part there, and then rotate this uh, on its side and then four times symmetry. Now, of course, it's not in the right angle here but this is my idea with this thing we just use these panels but on their side so let's see one is not enough either so we're gonna need two so we have to leave a bit of space for the other one then of course it has to be gold and uh, we move it in now we're not gonna see this on the top or on the bottom so it's okay Now we're not finished with that, so that's not a problem. We could even have gone eight times symmetry. Maybe that would have been better. Let's just have a look. Would that work? Probably not. We'll have to go four, four, I think. Now it will work because these can all be gold. So that's fine. Now just move it back again. Hmm. Detail work, micro engineering in KSP, something like that. That fits very nicely there. Of course, it does not fit very nicely there, which means these panels are not as far out as their gold equivalents. There, much better. Of course, there's still a gap there, but we'll work on that. Let's just get the other set now. Same story. We just want it rotated on its side. And then, uh, no, eight times symmetry. Just save us from having to do it again. And uh, gold. Now we're down to 879 delta V. This is not going to be enough. I did a test with this sort of configuration and uh, the landing was very close. So uh, that was without having to make any sort of corrections or anything on the way down. That's purely almost a suicide burn. And for most players that's not going to work, I think. Now why do we have this problem? Hmm. It would seem that these ones are not as far out still. It's a bit of an issue here. Hmm. Now it's too far on that side again. Now we'll go by these ones. So, uh, the fact that it's too far there... Yes, that's better. Much better. Things are at least not overhanging too much. Now we still have these uh, gaps in between, so now we get into the actual rotation of these panels. And just moving them a little further still. Now this is not going to be perfect, but it is better than leaving those awful gaps there. 
You see, there's still a bit of an, an, a gap there, an empty space. But at least this is gold in between, so it's hardly noticeable there. It's just not enough panel to cover it all up, I'm afraid. So we'll have to go with that for now. But like this, when we see it, it's totally covered. You don't see the tank at all. So uh, that's at least a much better solution to that problem. Now, of course, we have to do the same thing again on the top and on the bottom. I'm just referring back to the images. It's difficult to say what the color of that was. I assume it would be uh, the same sort of gold dark configuration. Where's that model that they stole from Neil Armstrong? That thing sort of had a an angle that I could use. Of course, it is just a model. No, it's flat on from the side again. This one shows the top. That's pretty much also golden. Yes, so I'm going to do... Well, this one... No, that's the lander itself. No, okay. So what we're going to do is we'll still use the gold, but then again use the gray for the two on the side. Just so it doesn't look again overwhelmingly gold. That's the problem. So we'll just throw it on like that for now. And then, of course, two on the sides here. And then two there. So, of course, this is not finished yet. So we'll just uh, move them down a little. No, I don't want that. Hmm. Should we keep that? No, I don't think so. Sort of overlapping there makes it look like the gold was wrapped over it. Which is kind of nice, but... No, we'll keep it like this, I think. Now we just want to move this down. Breath. Breath is being held. Okay, now obviously we can't get this perfectly flat because then these panels will stick through again. But that covers it up nicely there. So uh, I think this is good also with the two grey panels there. So at least we're getting somewhere. Now we're down to 87, uh, 847 uh, Delta V. So we keep dropping and dropping. And we will drop further still. Let me just put these panels on again. No, 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 no. And now why are we missing one? Okay, so just make it look a bit nicer again. We're still missing one. What? There, finally. Okay, move this back up. Hmm. There we go, comrades. And the scale, I think, works. Probably we could make the tank a little bit longer there, or higher, or taller, I suppose. But there is no other size that we could use for that. Uh, if we look at this, this is the one that we are using now. The next size up is massive, massive. That's a bit too much, I think. Let me just refer again to the pictures. Uh, look at the scale. So the bottom tank is just over half of the top lander. So I'm just using my fingers again. Pretty much this other one is going to be too much. You see, that's almost the full length of the actual lander. Although then again, we could actually use that. Mm. This opens up other possibilities. Now, I'm just going to save this, comrades. 
So this will be a tutorial mem m h e. There we go. So uh, save. So at least our work is not in danger. Let's take this thing away. Now, of course, I need to select the tank here to do that, but that should not be too difficult. Somewhere the tank will show. And now we don't have to rebuild all of that stuff. Let's just have a look at this one. <sighs> That's too tall now. This whole stack gets way too tall now. But it is possible. It is possible. I'm wondering if this might not help solve the problem of the ladder. That's why I'm indulging it. Let's just throw on the legs. Now, of course, the legs that we have to use are the micro struts. There's no other choice. If we have a look even on this bigger tank now, the LT1s, look how high up that's going to be. That's ridiculous. We can't use that. It has to be the smallest ones and of course it has to be like this with the leg under the door as well but now we have this problem that unlike the Apollo landing legs these ones jut above their attachment point and if you retract them it's even higher above the attachment point which means the ladder has to somehow cross over there without clipping into it which is a real problem with a smaller tank there now, would that work here? Where would we attach the ladder? I'm just doing sort of a boilerplate test again. Now, this ladder again is so unseemly with a huge sort of housing that it has. Where do we attach this? To the tank? We can't attach it to the top anyway. You see, it won't let us attach it near the door because it will block it unless we move it down. But uh, I want it to be attached to the actual landing stage. There's no point to take the ladder up. It was attached to the leg anyway. So, uh, let's just get this thing more or less like that. Uh, extend the legs. You see, it won't let us go higher than that either. It's the same with the smaller tank, which is so infuriating. This might work better. So essentially we want something like that. Now of course the angle is slightly off and all of that. But then we also don't want this thing sitting off at an angle like that. That does not look good. So I want some kind of a panel that goes above that. Of course it won't let us do that now. Let's just see if I move this up. It will again not allow me to move it. See, that's the highest that it goes. And I don't want a giant panel sticking out of the side of the uh, ascent stage. So in this case, we would have to use a strut again, our favorite friend here. And then throw this on top of that. Now it should allow us to move it a little higher. But then we get into this issue. Is There's no win situation here. Now it's clipping into the tank on the bottom of the ascent stage. But uh, I don't know if I can do anything about that. And of course this nightmare as well. The leg is now clipping into the covering the sort of the door of the ladder there. Hey, but I'm just wondering if this is not a better solution. That's not too unseemly and it still maintains the, you know, the impression of a little walkway there and then the, the, the legs with the ladder. That could work. That could work. Of course, this thing is too tall as well. I'd have to uh, move it a bit up as well. There is a little gap there.
I don't want that to clip because then we'll have problems when it detaches. So that's pretty much as far as I can take it unless I move the engine in. That's probably a better idea. Okay. This will work comrades. I'm rather going to take the bigger tank than the smaller one. I'm changing my mind here. I was planning to use that, but uh, it just looks a bit better. It's going to make the whole building of the ladder and the legs easier. And it will give us a bit more fuel as well, without us having to clip more tanks into the thing. And the scale on the balance of it is not terrible. If I just have a look again, it is just over half of the total height of that capsule there. So this is the one we're going for. Good, good, good. You see, it always helps to talk things through here. Then we get some better solutions. The FLTX440. So, comrades, to save you from having to sit through me attaching all the panels again, I will do this just off camera quickly. I'll just cut this out because you've seen what I'm going to do here. I'll just probably attach two panels, one on top of the other because it's a bit taller here. But it's the same deal. So, uh, you don't have to sit through that again. Okay, comrades, uh, the work is progressing here. I'll just make this note. I have to overlap the panels a little bit because two of them uh, is actually too much. So I just want to see maybe there's another size I could use instead. Could that work? Oh, no. You see, this is literally two of them on top of each other. It's going to be too tall here. Then the tank looks even longer than it already does. No, that's even worse. Okay, so it will have to overlap a little. Luckily, the clipping is only on the sides there. So uh, when we fill this up, it won't be obvious there. Now, the other thing here, I just changed the color of the tank to gray and orange because it has this part sticking out the side here. Now, in my case, I like this because it adds extra texture to the, uh, to the tank. Oh, good grief. Just had an idea. We could attach the landing legs to that. Of course, I'll have to rotate the tank now. Yes, we're going to do that. Okay, I'm going to have to do this over again. Mm -mm, not a problem. Okay, comrades, the construction is done here. So it's the same story as before, the, all the gold panels uh, on all the sides except these two. Now I'm wondering if it might be more practical now to attach the rover on here. Probably still not because I can only fold up the wheels and uh, the rest of the thing is still going to be oversized and it's still going to cause us to uh, unfortunately pitch over because of the in balance in the uh, the mass here when we go to land on the moon but we'll have a look at that in the next episode when we look at the actual rover for now i just want to finish the panel work here just want to remove this stuff out of the way so let's see now this part should be relatively easy again Okay, so the top part is at least in place now. Just get all this junk out of my face. Good grief. Can't work like this. Keep your workplace clean. So move this down uh, just as far as it will go without showing the side panels too much. And the same here. It is tall, I agree. The uh, the tank is a bit tall, but we really have a uh, have a choice here. Pick your poison, make it too tall or too short. I'll I'll take this one because it gives us more fuel and it just uh, helps us overcome the whole ladder landing leg problem. Now, of course, we have to repeat the procedure, but I want to put the uh, engine on first. So th there are millions of attachment points now because each panel has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight attachment points, if I'm counting correctly, possibly more. It is more because it's on the front and back as well. But this should should work decently well because of the bigger node there. Come on. Almost had it. 
there at last okay so let's move this thing back in here this gives us a thrust to weight of almost the same as the ascent stage can you believe that good grief things are working out just about right here comrades and uh, if we have too much fuel we take it out not a problem so let's have a look now of course the panel work has to be completed Ah, I just hope this thing, this whole Saturn V, is going to look nice when we're done, comrades. Then I'll be so happy. We could be... Uh-oh. Uh oh, no. Don't do that to me. Ah, sometimes if you take something off and you undo it, it won't let you undo it. Ah, it's always something. Just move this back. This should be relatively easy to fix, though. This is why saving constantly is a, a must. Now it probably has to go out a little. Just to stay with the theme of having the bottom one overlap the top one. Now this uh, should still be relatively easy to do. Let's just make sure I don't take this away either all right fix this so yes what i was thinking uh, started to say there was that once we're done and we want to be a little bit uh, not arrogant but at least a little bit proud of our work we could call this the definitive making history version of the saturn 5 apollo but maybe that would be a bit too uh, too daring, I think. Hmm, how about that? I think this is starting to take shape here, comrades. We still have the pipe sticking out of the bottom there a little bit, so it gives it that, uh, you know, I almost want to say industrial feel to it, but uh, certainly appropriately. Now the legs. So, save. Oh, for goodness sake, please save. Now the legs, yes. So these will go onto these ready-made... Uh, Attachment points. Well, they're not really attachment points because we see it's upside down because of the panels. But it looks the part. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, man, it's working out. So we'll start the retracted there. Now they fit snugly there. So uh, let's plan the rest of this thing out. Now we need our friend and uh, best savior here, the cubic strut. I'll just throw it on to that point. We can move it around a little. I have to say my voice is not quite there yet after yesterday's super long episode. But no regrets, comrades. No regrets. Get another panel here. Make sure it's lined up properly. And uh, now we have to work on the ladder again. So let's bring that back. Hmm. Okay, the only way to really look at that now is to extend the legs. So let's do that. What's the weight of this lander? 6.6 .6 tons at the moment. Just going to go out and look at the uh, Wikipedia page again. What was the actual weight of the lander? Uh, launch mass uh, initial 15,000 kilograms so uh, initial 16 tons hmm. so between 15.2 and 16.4 tons so we're still way 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 under weight here this is why also we can't look at exact weights and thrust to weight ratios and kilo newtons and all of that because it will never match up with the real world now let's get the angle here right yes this is so much better comrades i'm glad we're using the bigger tank that looks much neater now look at that certainly now of course we still have this whole thing on an angle here but at least there's a place for the kerbals to walk now so i'm wondering what could we do to make it look even nicer well the first thing of course is the uh, the guards for the rcs thrusters so in that sense i use the smallest triangular panels 
and of course they won't let us attach it on the long side so we have to do this sort of manually now again why do they do that hmm. No, oh, come on, man. I want to see if I can have it auto attached to these points, but there's so many of them. It's never going to work. No, so it has to be back to square one again. Let's just see if I can get it more or less right four times. Now, of course, it's only letting me do two times because the panels underneath are only two times, but that's okay. Just having it stick out there because I can see I didn't do that properly. Did I use this panel? I think so. The other ones are much bigger. Oh, no, 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 no. I know what I did now. Okay, never mind. This is why I'm thinking this thing looks a bit weird. Or did I? Oh, good grief. What did I end up using with this during my test? Hmm... Ah, there's an even smaller one, this one, the SPT-06 panel. This is it, comrades, we found it. So two times symmetry, and then, and this does, well, the, all the sides are the same length, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so we have it there. Now, of course, this is not finished yet. I just want to get them all placed first. Okay, so that helps to also hide the sort of inner workings of the ladder there a little bit. Now, as it stands right now, these uh, guards are going to be useless because the RCS thrusters fire directly into them. So I want to move them a little bit. Now, I'm wondering if I use the snap, if that will help us to keep it uniform. The only thing I don't want is it clipping into the ascent module, which it's not doing now. So I'm happy with that. Just one snap and then it's in place. Let's just move this to the very outer edge. And uh, of course the color we can play around with. The dark is probably going to be the best. So now just again one snap. Like that. And then... Scalpel please, Doctor. Very fine work here. It's like surgery. There. Although, I don't want to see that top gold line there. Hmm, there we go. I think that will sort that out. So now, of course, they can actually... Of co uh, again, in Kerbal, it makes no difference at all. Because the thrusters can fire directly into a wall and uh, or into the side here. The, and they'll still work, even though they should be cancelling themselves out. But uh, like this, we can see that the jet will come down, hit the angle there, and then be deflected away. So this is now, in a way, that I'm happy with it. So, uh, let's see, what's the next thing? Mm, should we cover up this whole thing a bit more? Is it necessary? Let's go back to the real images again. I'm just having a quick look. Now, of course, here the uh, the ladder was attached flat onto the top of the uh, landing section. So, we can't recreate that because our landing legs go a bit... Or can we actually? Hmm... <sighs> No, but then there's going to be a gap between this platform and the landing, the, the ladder. Yes, I know, and I don't want to move it further because this, this front cover of the ladder, which swings down, of course, this is nothing like the real world. It's going to clip into this if we uh, move it even further down. Of course, like that it will, but at this point, the ladder will be closed. So... On the balance again, I think this is the best solution. This sort of raised platform. I'm just going to save. Let me fiddle with this for a moment, comrades, and then see if I'm changing my mind or not. I doubt it. 
Comrades, I think I'm changing my mind. <laughs> oh, good grief. Well, that's par for the course here at the Admiral Design Bureau. So, I think because if we uh, take the... This is now again from memory, the last time I used the lander. The Kerbals are actually going to be able to stand upright here, even with a panel right almost on the, the, the top level of the tank there. This way it also isn't clipping into the bottom golden tank there. Now, the ladder like this I'm happy with. It's very close to the leg, but uh, we can move it out a little bit. Of course, in real life it was attached to the leg, so of course it would be close. We can't. Okay, it's not going to move any further. So that's fine. The rungs are still on the outside of the leg, not clipping into it. So now, of course, the cover of the uh, ladder is clipping into the leg there. But the real thing didn't have a cover because it wasn't a, an extendable ladder. So I'm, I'll, I'll be able to live with that. Like this, it's fine because it's clear. Now, again, when I uh, retract it, it's going to clip into the thing. Oh, no. No, you. Why? I can't move the ladder out or backwards because then it's going to clip into the leg when it's extended. Unless we move. No, it's not going to work. I don't want to move the legs down, although I can. I'm just getting messages on my phone here. Let's just move that down, but not so that the top part clips through there. Okay, that's fine. Now if it extends, let's just have a look. Now it obviously is not going to change that much. Let's see what this looks like. Uh. Comrades, I guess at some point we have to just say that's decent-ish. But then again, no, we don't do that at the uh, Admiral Design Bureau. What the heck am I talking about? Decent-ish. Have you ever heard anything so ridiculous? That solves the problem, pretty much. It's touching it right there, but that I can live with. It's not clipping into the cover there. Comrades, there we are. That's it. Save, 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 save. Now, there's a few other changes I want to make, or, or additions, I should say. We want to stabilize this thing, so I want to give it two attachment points, I think. Now, of course, two times symmetry is not going to work now. We don't need this technically, but I maybe we'll do it just one time symmetry then. And attach it with the short end outward. Like that, somehow. Like we saw with the model of uh, Neil Armstrong's lander there. Maybe a bit further in. But you know, so this will give it a more plausible thing here, that it's actually not just hanging on the engine there, it's actually attached to the lower part of the lander. That I can live with. Let's do the same on the other side. Okay. Yes, that's it, that's it, that's it. I like that. We also don't want the, uh, the, the struts to remain behind on the... Uh, top of the lander here because we want less weight on the way back up. So, uh, yes, I think this will do. I could even put a little railing here with struts, but that would be a bit crazy, maybe. What does the real thing look like? It does sort of have a railing there. How would we do that, though? We'd need the cubic struts again. Actually, before we do anything, I need to save again, and we need to just 
do a practice on the the launch pad. I just want to see what it looks like when a Kerbal gets out there. So Jeopardy and Bill will test this for us. So let's have a look. Okay, what happened here? Where are my legs? Huh. Okay, comrades, I just went back, I reverted, and I just retracted the legs. I think they just exploded or something. They vaporized. Let's extend them now. Yes, they can still lift the weight of this thing, and I think this looks quite nice, to be honest. The scale here is uh, is quite pleasing for me. So let's get somebody to go out. EVA, now they barely fit through that door, and you see, the, 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 it wouldn't have worked if this panel was uh, higher up. I just see the strut poking out there, I'll fix that. You see the feet are almost touching it, so let it go. And, uh, uh oh, what the... Extend the ladder... What's happening to you? Okay, grab. No, 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 not that one. Why is uh, the panel flexing like that? Strange. Grab that one and climb down. That will be quite easy. I'm just going to have to do a rigid attachment or something. Yes, this works, this works. Let's just revert. Okay, now there's a few things. The strut doesn't actually poke out there. It's just because of the, the, the sort of... The, I will, don't want to say the, the weight of the Kerbal because that has never flexed stuff before. I think it's because of the angle here on the ascent module. Say rigid attachment and say auto strut. Just to do that. Of course, auto strut the top to the bottom as well. That should solve the problem. It should anyway. On the moon, of course, the weight will be less, but I'm going to do another test run and then get back to you in one moment, comrades. Save. Okay, it still happens. It's because the angle of the, uh, the, the doorway there is pushing against the helmet. So when they get out, it sort of pushes them into the floor. But uh, I don't think that's really too much of a problem because on the moon again, hopefully it will be slightly less pronounced and it doesn't affect anything, you know. You can almost imagine their weight as they step onto it. It would flex a little bit there. Now, uh, why do I make things difficult? We can't even see that strut there. No! Okay, don't delete it, just undo it. Otherwise the thing would disappear, but I did save it. just want that thing there not to stick out mm. details details little bit higher we saw there was still a bit of room just to line up perfectly there There we go. That'll work. Now, is it clipping into the tank? No, 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 no. No, it's not. Doesn't look like it. It's sort of just barely touching it there. We could move it down a bit. Just one step. Yes, now it's clear. Okay, good, good, good. We'll test the whole thing anyway to see if any... Things are making contact and will disrupt the separation there. Of course, that engine should be on the stage. Now, what is the next step for us? The next step is to first put on some monopropellant tanks again. We can take some of the fuel out to compensate, but they, this thing also had that sort of empty space there. Of course, attaching it directly to the tank now is quite impossible. Mm. We'll do four on top and four on the bottom. And the nozzle is clipping. No, 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 no. Undo. There we go. Better. Now we'll move this in. Hmm. Okay. And... Uh, to the same on the top. So we'll have 4x4 four four because these are very small. They only hold 7.5 monopropellant each. So I don't feel bad doing that. Uh, 
Now to compensate, we can take a tiny bit of fuel out, but I almost don't want to do that because there was still a bit of room there on the top and bottom of the tank because of the curvature of the tank itself. And of course, we need slightly more delta V on the way down than on the way up. So this works out, I would say, perfectly, comrades. We just want to see if we can have railings here. Uh, almost sighing like the doors in the Hitchhiker's movie. Uh, <laughs> no, let's not get too dramatic. I'm enjoying this, I have to say. It's Easter Friday today. And uh, it's a bit rainy here, which is actually a good thing, given the drought in Cape Town. But uh, I think this is a fun way to spend an afternoon. Now, of course, it moves in tandem there. No, 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 no. We're not going to do that. We are going to uh, use just the plain struts here. One on each side, I think. attach it there so we can't actually see it and then of course when the thing separates that will break off anyway I know that's not what happened in real life but this is a, a decent way to solve that problem there so it's sort of a railing there just to keep them from falling off the two millimeter edge there so uh, save again that helps that helps now i don't know if the lander had lights on it i almost don't think that it did so we're not gonna bother with lights of course if you know if it did please tell me i can add it before the final mission but is that it is that is it, are we done i almost think that we are done i'm just going to put the and antenna on an action group one i'll fix all this again in the final stack just so that all the antennas deploy correctly yes both are, are slightly angled out there okay that's fine so save again what do we do now comrades we have 7.2 tons that we want to test in orbit so we are going to throw this onto the saturn 1b stack and uh, so in this case save the final version i think this is pretty much the final version i'm happy with it we can tweak it if i if i see a need again so open and go to the tutorial uh saturn 1b merge now in this case we would not have the uh, csm on top so we're just going to take that of course ideally with a panel just take this and throw it away and then attach this to that. It's a big uh, dis distance here. We don't want that big a distance with the limb. Search for plates again. Let's use a smaller one, the smallest one. Yes, now I'm just going to have a look at the uh, Saturn 1B. Uh, I think in the Wikipedia again there's a comparison of the how the fairings looked with the LEM test command service module and lunar module Apollo 5 so that is sort of just it's not even a nice pointed shape there it goes and then it goes in and then it meets at the top so I think we can solve that quite easily it's almost like the typical Kerbal fairings now we just move the plate I also removed the uh, server uh, not the service the uh, instrument module the reaction wheel there because we didn't need it if we had that in the saturn 1b there's no need for the auxiliary propulsion system because we just have a reaction wheel and of course i added ant engines down there or spider engines just for the uh ulage there Okay, so now we've done that. Uh, do we need to worry about the thing attaching nicely here? Is it possible? Where's the plate now? There. Why not? 
there we go that will work comrades now we just redo the fairings so I'll say delete the fairings and build the fairings and this thing is sort of like this oh, it's not building the cross section because it's clipping into its own plate there again it's almost like that if we look at the real thing might be a bit more pointed though How's that? That's not terrible. In our case, I think this will suffice, comrades. Let's just move the whole thing up again and just have a look at the appearance of the thing. Now, that's all just pure white uh, fairings. We don't put any stripes or anything on that like I did here to sort of simulate the stripes. Yes, that's more or less what it looks like. It could be a bit taller and all of that, but is that necessary? Of course it's necessary. It might have another slight angle there. But this will work. Save. This is now... Okay, save. Uh, Saturn IB... Oh, come on. If I mouse over the Kerbal Engineer, it cancels out the typing. Save. So this is the Saturn 1B mem uh, making history expansion. You'll find this in the Dropbox as well. So let's make sure the staging is proper here. I'm firing the spiders now at the same time that we separate from the uh, stage there because uh, in this case we're doing just the we're not doing a lunar insertion or lunar insertion with the s4b but with the saturn 5 i'll save the spiders until we're just about ready to make our burn towards the moon and then i'll fire them so that it sort of gets the fuel flowing and all of that now after that we fire that then we separate that then we separate that and then we're going to do all the tests so now this uh i'm not sure what what was the mission for apollo 5 let's search that was it unmanned must be or did it meet up with the csm unmanned flight of the lunar module okay so we, we are not going to put crew on this thing although we are but then we're just going to revert it's fine just uh, to, uh, doesn't matter here. Save and launch. Okay, I'll just have to add more fuel to the S4B because the uh, we don't, of course, have the service module of the CSM. But in this case, we can just burn the engine of the landing stage. It's part of our test. So let's uh, just separate here. Also, I have to add more force on the fairings because they basically knocked one of our antennas off there. Do that and it's going to go haywire a little bit. This is why we need the extra monopropellant. Just stabilize it. Okay, so we know the engine works, I guess. And we just want to get into a rough orbit here. That will do. That's a low carbon orbit. So now we want to test the... Uh, let's just extend the gears. Extend the ladder. And I suppose now we sort of simulate the, the whole thing. We're landed on the moon now. We know the engine works. So then we shut that down. 
and we just want to see if the separation here is going to be clean now so full throttle oh that's like butter come on now that works so well comrades i think we have it i'll just make those small changes to the fairings now and to a bit of extra fuel because we also have less mass here in the lander than we did with the csm just so that if you're uh, following along here you can also get to orbit without any trouble here and uh, that will do for this episode of course this will be a revert now otherwise they're gonna die here but uh, that does it for the test and for this episode comrades i hope you've enjoyed and in the next one we'll be having a look at the rover so uh, i must say i'm very happy I'm, I'm i'm surprised about how well this turned out because i thought it was going to be a long drama with the ladder and the legs and all of that because the tank was basically too short there the original one so yes there we are comrades have a fantastic day